thing is, is to cut this down to nine centimeters. So that's pretty much it there. Go down to nine. I don't think I'm going to bother with the um, chalk line. I'll just draw it out. And just redo it. Might just mark it like this. Because the chalk line is in the car. And uh, this might just be good enough quicker, maybe. I'm going to get it just to see those as I work my way along. It really have to be that accurate either, really. So I'll probably just put it up on the top and then plane it all down a little bit with the power plane. Right, so now I found out that it would have been quicker to get the chalk line. Still not going to do it though. I haven't done any work on this for a while because I haven't been here. Mm -hmm. I had to go to England and it's been quite wet while I've been away. So all the materials have got wet which is not very good but because the air temperature has gone down quite a lot I think it's like three, three degrees now, four degrees. So it's of no, uh, no matter at all because the wood just doesn't rot at this temperature. So it doesn't really matter how wet it gets now. Once the roof is on, it'll dry out during the winter, little by little.
I was wondering whether I should use peg, pegs for this because being nine centimeters thick, even if I use 12.5 centimeter nails, which is pretty much the biggest I have, or you know, that are readily available, um, it's going to be. That one needs to come down a centimetre there, but that's all right. So I'm going to, I'll put in a, I'll use my wooden pegs, which is kind of fun anyway. That one is at nine, so that's good. I'll just use a chisel to take that bit off there. That's a woodpecker. They're called swat spit, a black woodpecker. I didn't go all the way through, but I did make a little hole just with that point there. And that will help to drain it if it needs. And let's see how good these are, if they're going to work. I think I might go get my new mallet now. I talked before about not having a mallet, and in the meantime, I've got a hold of one of those bowling balls and made one. Helps having a bit of weight. So I'm hoping for nine centimeter, pretty much there. I haven't put the wedge in yet. I'm going to put a wedge in, in the bottom of the hole there. Here's a little bit of footage of making this mallet for your viewing pleasure.
quite brittle, so I'm not, not going to go any deeper than that. That goes to about that depth, about halfway. A tiny bit longer than about halfway. And my logic for that is that I'm, <laughs> there are more fibres to hold it together. I think that that's probably enough. If I have a nice snug fit with a piece of ash into there, and I can put a wedge into the bottom to stop it from coming out again. That's what I'm going to try and do. It's very brittle, you see, it, it actually breaks quite easily. The chips that you see here are... Um, well, you know, I haven't been very careful really. But it's going to be a working tool, so it's going to get chipped like that anyway, probably. If, it, if it's the kind of wood that chips a lot. I notice as I'm drilling that as I'm going down in deeper into the wood it's changing its characteristics, it's more brittle at the edges, um, kind of drier and it's more oily inside. So it felt a little bit, um, perhaps it felt a little bit different to drill. Perhaps it was just better lubricated. Presumably oils can dry out of this, I'll probably treat it with something maybe, or dip it in linseed oil or something. Although I'm not honestly, uh, I don't, I'm not actually a great believer that dipping things in linseed oil really makes much difference. So at least um, that's what I've been told by the character called Jon Brenner, who's um, done a lot of research in Norway about different characteristics of paint on wood. And his um, teaching is that linseed oil doesn't really penetrate very deeply and doesn't really make a difference to the strength of the lignin that holds the um, fibres together anyway. to clamp this down. I'm hoping for a little bit of oversight on this as well so I can cut it down a bit if I need to. Cloud power plane it maybe. Might just use the axe. I'm not really finished with the mallet, I'm going to probably put it on a lathe and take a little bit off. Because it's a little bit he heavy at the moment. It's quite nice to have a heavy, heavy one, but that's what we're going to use it for, really. I think this can be safely further out than these ends a little bit because I want the tin to come right out to the end. Um, and there's a problem with snow and ice in Norway that it bends the ends over of tin roofs so I want it to have firm support right up to the last five centimetres. All, my, all I'm after there is a nine centimetre thickness down onto the joist so that's about nine and a half now so that just gives half a centimetre to go off with the power plane a bit later. <laughs> Now that these two are clamped together, it should be a little bit easier to drill because the swarf gets caught between the two, the second piece of wood.
take out the shavings. I want that go to go down to about that depth there. So put a little line on there easily enough to help with my depth. I'll just find my pencil. Just quite easy to check that, you see. All right, not quite as far as that. And when it's spinning, it's um, very shiny, the graphite, so you can see it. What really after there is a hole. Well, that's quite a good idea to have a little drain hole at the bottom. Didn't really want it to go all the way through. <sighs> okay. Do you remember when I cut these one? I mean, obviously for you it's probably kind of is that long ago, really, is it? I mean, it was months ago. But I cut these. <laughs> them slightly larger than the 18 millimeter drill bit yeah that's at the bottom It's easy to just knock off with the axe or with the saw. Pulling really hard there, pretty much with all my strength, because I don't want to just carry on drilling down and down and down. I want to pull the swarf out chips. Actually, maybe that's not too far because I could actually put the peg through and then split it and wedge it from the inside so it can't come off. it down no wonder to get a saw cut that off after, after a lot of requests over the years, over the three, four years, I've, is it three years, I've been on the YouTube channel. I've had a lot of requests for a microphone so that people can hear me talking. And finally, just now I've got, managed to get one. Thank you. 
split before it's gone in. So it's a fine line because the last ones went in nicely between getting that peg through the wood and it's splitting. Well, it is into the other wood, but that isn't really far enough. So I could drill it out. I could knock it through from the other side, I suppose. I might try again with another piece a bit further up. There'd be probably too much friction to do that though. Well, that one has a nail as well, so we'll just call it. Oh no, no, I don't want real one to. forward. Maybe if I bang that one in a bit further, I mean, it doesn't need to be all the way to the very top of that piece of wood, it's better that it goes deeper into the other piece. further because it's just too tight. Well I might put a screw in there as well later. I didn't feel like that went deep enough into the piece of wood underneath really. nails into end grain come out quite easily which is nice. Good one for the mallet maybe. It's a bit of weight. And then I can also shoot out here a little bit with the plates giving it a little bit more protection underneath the bottom. It's not a bad idea. I'll do that with a chainsaw. I might use that with an electric chainsaw. Now, there's maybe a little bit of concern that this perhaps wouldn't be strong enough, but I think it is, and I don't think that it rots. Um, but I don't really know very much about it. So if you do know something about it, I would really appreciate um, a comment. I'm just talking about using this older wood under the roof construction here. Oh. I couldn't find very much written about it. If you know that it rots even though it's dry, then uh, do comment in the comments. Thanks. Let's take off a little centimetre here as well. Might have to pull that up a little bit as well because it's a bit too far down, I think. Uh, if you're new to this channel series, this series on doing this getting big, you maybe don't know and think that this is something that I've done regularly or a lot of, and that's the case. Okay, so this is the first time I've built one of these getting big. It's not a piece of work I'm doing for a customer, so I can 
do whatever kind of experimenting I fancy within reason. Want to make a building that's safe, of course. In fact, I don't have any choice about that. I have to make a building that's safe enough. That's allowed to just build any old rubbish here. But I'm not using any kind of mathematics or engineer tables or anything to, to determine the strength of the parts that I'm making here. I'm just using kind of general knowledge of buildings. That's the nine, I've got about ten there now, so that last centimetre I can take off the power plane I think. Last wedge. So I'm just experimenting with fresh timber, with wet timber, with dry timber. I mean everything's wet now because it's been raining a lot. I didn't cover it up when I went away. I had to go away at short notice. I think I put a strap on that and pull it up a bit before I put it on because it could, that could do with being a little bit higher up. It's nice and flexible, so no doubt about that. Bending on it. 